They haven't lost a golf match of any kind this season, so why start now in the postseason? The Hannibal Pirates absolutely dominated district play today at Moberly, taking apart everybody else in the field, winning and running away with this thing by 29 strokes. We'll start you off in hole number one right here. Jacob McLaren on the approach, and he was wise to leave this below the hole. Everything to the back of the hole slides forward, and look at the birdie putt right here. Jams at home with a little gusto. One under to start his round. That was good. McLaren struggled all day with his driver, but when you're making second shots like this from the trees, look at this to end up helping himself save par on hole number three. That, my friends, pin high a punch shot. He two putts from there and ends up taking par on the hole. Fired a 73 on the day. Good for a share of second place along with many of his teammates. More on that in just a second. Scott Cockrell off to the great start as well today. Playing at number three for the Pirates. Great approach shot again on number one. This time, even with the hole to above the hole, so this is going to be a trickier putt. No problem for Scott Cocker, who's going to knock in the slider right there for the birdie. He finished with a 74, good for fifth place all on his own after knocking down the birdie putt. Charlie Bauman, also none too shabby on this day on hole number four. The great approach shot on the short par four. He would save par there, fire a 73. McLaren. Bauman and Whiston today, all with 73s. Cockrell with a 74. The Hannibal Pirates win by 29 strokes and run away with the district. They head off to the sectional coming up at Wright City coming up next week. Congratulations to Mike Blaze's crew. Meanwhile, the Quincy University volleyball team has found a little homegrown help. Unity middle hitter Rachel Rush, who helped lead the Mustangs to their first sectional title since 1995, has pledged the Hawks. Rachel was an honorable mention all-state selection by the Champaign News Gazette and a first-team all-West Central Conference pick for the South Division. She finished this fall with 400 kills and hit at a 313 clip, had 256 digs and a team high 58 blocks. She also served 35 aces and had 116 service aces, or excuse me, I should say service points. All very good numbers. A great get for the Quincy University Lady Hawks. Today we've got baseball for you. Alani West goes on the road and beats Q&D. 7-5 was your final there. West Hancock, way too much for West Prairie today. Great pitching effort from Austin Hardy after initially giving up an early home run. We've got Grigsville Perry losing to Pittsfield in walk-off fashion. Braden Cox plays your hero in that ball game. Beardstown, too much for Unity on the road today. And Brown County, a one-run winner over Austin Dormeyer in Central Southeastern. Meanwhile, Quincy Notre Dame girls taking on West Hancock. Allison DeWald very, very good early on as the Titans led two to nothing with the lead. And then she goes top shelf here for the strikeout as well. But Q&D got things going in the fourth inning, trying to keep that unbeaten run alive. Tori Kuhn puts the ball in play. A misplay and an errant throw scores Kristen Gingenbacher. And West Hancock's lead is cut to two to one at that point. Raiders add on in the seventh. How about an infield grounder right here from Aubrey Venverlo? That scores Ari Rigg, who had a big day today, two for three at the plate with a double and a triple. The Raiders up seven to two at that point, but the Titans rally back in this one. Bottom of the seventh, Katie Schaefer finds a gap with two runners on, scores two. You know what? West Hancock had the go-ahead run in the on-deck circle, but this was disastrous. A double play to end the ball game, and West Hancock's upset bid is thwarted. QND wins and stays unbeaten. 7-4 to four was your final there. Also in softball today, Illini West way too much for South Fulton, winning that game 10-0. We've got track and field for you. Quincy High Invitational, always fun, and we'll start you off with a 4 by 100 meter relay in the boys' side of things. And this, my friends, is just a testament to how good and how fast the Hannibal Pirates are. Logan Hicks bringing up the anchor leg as his team wins going away the four by 100 meter we started things off today with the open mile and that's our good friend Jared Schmidt out of Liberty proven that old guys can still get it done I say old guys he's hardly old but he is coaching these days and he ran that mile in 440 impressive nevertheless Jake Crenshaw you know him well as a defending state champion in the shot Boy, he was good in the disc today as well. A new personal record, 168 feet, 3 inches. You can tell he's happy. That is an individual title as well for he and his team. The Pirates running away with things on the boys' side. Girls' side, 4 by 100-meter uh, relay. You saw Central Southeastern get the good start, but it would be Hannibal making it the sweep today as Hannibal cleans up on the girls' side here to take the team title as well. More highlights to come right now. We'll show you Mariah Hoke. She doesn't get to throw many because she's playing softball and she's about to be a Division I thrower at the next level. She won the disc today with a throw of 124 and 1 inch. Good for her. Also showing up big for Quincy High in the 100 meter. Isaiah Bell, check him out in the middle of your screen, running this in 11.44 to beat 
Hannibal's Priv on McBride, but it is a Hannibal sweep today on the boys and girls side as the Pirates take both teams' titles. The boys run away with it, as you see the team scores here. Hannibal putting up 223 points on the day to beat Quincy High. Also, as you see on the girls' side, Hannibal winning in a less comfortable fashion, but winning nevertheless. We've got some college baseball for you today. Lincoln Land, congratulations to Zach Burling, who announced earlier this week he's heading to Western Illinois next year to play baseball. Good start in this one for this guy, Craig Bostert on the hill as he gets a strikeout after giving up some early runs and then disaster for John Wood as they give up 10 unanswered runs in this game. They end up losing both ends of a doubleheader today. Final count in this one was 10 to 3. Final count in the other one was 10 to 5. And that's all the time we have. We'll have more news for you coming up after this.